Hi everyone and welcome back to Macaroon. This is actually an unplanned follow-up to the last video since so many of you asked whether the DIY would work if I just diluted the solution a bit more. As you might remember, I accidentally added twice the amount of calcium chloride to the water, which explained why all the pieces I tried to make turn into egg shapes instead of staying in the shape of the mold. I only realized this mistake when editing the video, so by that time it was too late to try again. However, I was really curious to know myself, so I decided to make a second video to test it out. Before we get started, here's an update on those tiny jelly balls from the same video. All the people following me on Instagram will have seen this already, so be sure to check out my account at Macaroon. These were made by dropping sodium alginate gel into a solution of calcium chloride. This was what they looked like right after making, and they really remind me of tiny Orbeez. I left them overnight on an uncovered plate, and the next day they've shrunk a bit in size. Then I left them alone for an entire week, and as you can see, the water has evaporated completely. However, they still look a bit like Orbeez, so I put them back into liquid to see if they would rehydrate. I left them for several days and they expanded a tiny bit, but definitely not back to their original size. So this toy is clearly designed for one use only, and you can't really keep or rehydrate your pieces after they've been made. Now let's redo the entire DIY using a less concentrated solution. As you might remember, the last video ended with me saving up the remaining calcium chloride solution in a bottle. I have this here, so I'm just going to pour it back into the container. Then I'm adding a second bottle of plain water, which should dilute everything by half to give us the correct concentration. I'm also going to try out one of these wooden templates, which I didn't get round to doing so in the first video. I'm going to start by soaking the mold for 10 seconds in the liquid, as mentioned in the instructions. I'm not sure how much this helps, but maybe it lets some calcium chloride stick to the inside, which helps the colored gel solidify. This mold is pretty big, which is why I didn't try it the first time round, since it uses up quite a lot of the gel. After dipping it into the solution, I noticed that a membrane does form over the top layer, but the gel seems to be sticking to the sides. The fact that this mold has really rough wooden edges seems to be a problem, because the gel is firmly stuck into place and there's no space at all for the calcium chloride to get through. I left this for ages in the solution, but as you can see, only the front part ended up solidifying, and the rest just peeled away from the mold. These wooden templates seem very unsuitable for this kit, and I would suggest avoiding them completely. You'll just end up wasting a lot of colored gel, which is a huge shame since you can use that to make so many other things. Next up, I want to repeat the rainbow heart design using the same plastic mold. Since our solution is only half as strong as the previous video, I had high hopes that this would help the piece retain its shape. But even though the spherification process was noticeably slower this time, the heart still started shrinking and the edges went all crinkly instead of staying smooth. Then I tried repeating everything with a dolphin, and here's a picture of how it should look based on the website. I have to say this attempt turned out much better than the one from the previous video, but it's still not perfect. I realized that it's really difficult to create eyes using the black gel, since part of it will always slide around inside the liquid center. 
This explains why in all the sample images, the animals have something which looks like diamonds for eyes. Though at least this one looks like a fish, compared to my complete fail from the first video. Now I'm going to try this squirrel template. Once again, the mixture shrinks quite a bit, however it manages to stay in a rough shape instead of turning into a completely round egg. I think in order to make this DIY perfectly, you have to adjust the concentration of the solution every time you place a mold inside, just to make sure that the membrane is forming at the right speed. This seems a bit tricky since you have to go by instinct and your solution is not guaranteed to work every time. However, despite all this, there's something oddly satisfying about this kit, even if the pieces don't turn out perfectly. I think it's just the process of seeing a liquid gel turn into a solid shape that you can touch. This heart was super easy to make, and actually held its shape better than the rainbow one. Lastly, I want to try another glitter design using galaxy colors which are really easy to make using the tubes of gel provided. Any glitter you sprinkle over the top will stay stuck in place, so there's lots of room for creativity. This almost feels like a slight variation of making slime. And finally, I'm going to pop these, which I find incredibly satisfying, and I love the viewer who described it as aesthetic pimple popping. However, if you don't like seeing things being popped open, then feel free to stop the video right now. There's also a very mild trigger warning for the red heart design, since that might look a bit like blood.
so I hope you enjoyed this DIY follow-up. I was a bit disappointed that it wasn't as easy to get these perfect shapes as I had thought. However, there's still something very satisfying about this kit. Even if you just end up making tiny ball or egg shapes, it's still very relaxing to play around with the colors and textures. You can try out different kitchen utensils such as spoons, ice cream scoops, or cake pop molds. The chemicals are non-toxic, so you can simply wash them afterwards as you would with normal cutlery. I'm Joanna, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!